the show. Back again, video format. It's going to be an unbelievable show today. We got some great guests, great conversation, and great topics. You're all going to like it. And because everybody loves the Nightfly. So let's uh, just get it going right now. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Nightfly Podcast. This is coming out on Tuesday, November 17th. It's a two weeks to Thanksgiving. Boy, let's know whatever it's going to be. Thanksgiving almost canceled, possibly in my house as well. Uh, well, anyway, thank you for coming to the show. This is our combination audio video podcast, and hello. We have so much to get to today. Let's just get started. I hope you're doing okay. You can see me in my apartment. I'm kidding. This is the Seinfeld backdrop. I had a Washington, D.C. backdrop I've been using for a while, but it's a little distracting, so this one just seems the perfect uh, amount of uh, space that's needed for what we're doing. Uh, we also have two guests we're going to have on today. So... Uh, Let's just get things going. I, I will tell you, uh, we have a, 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 I don't know where to begin. I'm always uh, confused on where to begin. Um, uh, our two guests, uh, one will be uh, my friend Sophie Ponchak. She is a, a, a daughter of a, a close friend of mine, and she wants to be, I've, I've gotten her, uh, you know, to, to talk to the people at The Bachelor. She wants to be on The Bachelor. She's talking about how difficult it is to date in New York City, even when you're as pretty as she is at 25 and what somebody at 25 is doing during COVID. Uh, and Esther Koo will be joining us again, whether you like it or not. Uh, some people <laughs> I guess don't care for it, but we had a funny thing happen to us on election day. So we'll go over that for a little bit and it should be a good time for all. And you want to have some good and uh, obviously attractive guests. What are you doing? A video podcast. Now, let me get to the big news. I guess it's big news in the uh, Nightfly world of news. I spent all last night, I'm recording this on Saturday afternoon. I record. I spent all last night till three in the morning working on finally the Patreon page, the Patreon Dave Juskow page. That's what's called Dave Juskow Patreon. Be able to find it's launched, it's ready to go. It's, it, I mean, it's happening, it's out, it's out there, I guess. I still don't know how it works exactly for you guys, but it, I put it together. And why did it take me? It took me like two months. I mean, it took me a long time, but it took me like a month. Once I started getting going, I had to keep stopping. I'm like, well, what do I have to offer? What do I have to offer? But everybody who listens to this show or watches this show um, has been so kind and like, you got to do the Patreon, man. You know how I feel about it. I don't want to charge anybody and it's very awkward, but I'm in trouble. So, uh, you know, I know everything will work out, but everybody's doing Patreon. It doesn't seem like a horrible thing. So that's what I'm doing. And I finally put it together. What do I have to offer? Not that much, but for $3 a month, and believe me, I've done extensive research. Plus, last night I was also making like a little intro video with me and Bernie. I used all my puppets, <laughs> which could either be ridiculous or, or maybe somebody who's coming to the page are like, this is stupid. But again, I don't see anybody joining or subscribing or being an investor in me if you don't get the puppets and you don't get the nonsense you know then what are you doing right so i used all my pumps like the, the bernie level uh for three dollars you know what you get you get the podcast early what does early mean i don't really know no but you get it you know i record on saturday sometimes sometimes it's completed by then or sunday or whatever or even early, or, or even on monday so i guess you get that early once i figure out where the hell it's supposed to go uh i think i got it figured out so you go i think you go on patreon and you get it because everybody else seems to be able to do it so you know when i record on fridays or saturdays you'll get it as soon as it's ready uh the only off chance that you wouldn't get it ridiculous a day at least early would be when i record on mondays but that's very rare uh but you know it comes out at tuesdays at 1 a.m and uh you should be able to get it on uh, sunday or monday so that's 
something I can offer. Uh, the $5 calico level. It's making me laugh as I'm, coming, I'm picturing uh, the, the puppets. <laughs> is uh, is uh, you get uh, you get this you get this the the video what the the monthly you get the, the podcast early and you get the video uh, podcast or you can't call it a podcast video cast as well the the monthly video cast you know especially when I kind of shape it up and get better guests and get it going and know that people are subscribing I'll you know make it a little better but you know you get to see what's going on and you get to see some of the uh, you know, the things I'm talking about, like you'll you get, you know, we'll talk about news stories, but we can actually take a look at it. And, uh, you know, you get that, too. Uh, but for the the ten dollar. Uh, uh, Maggie level, it's a magpie, Maggie. Uh, you you get uh, the, the other two and uh, you can submit questions when we have great guests. And uh, if I if I. You know, if we use the question, and we'll give you a shout out uh, with your name and everything. I'm talking about like now. So I so it's also you can use it for the Tuesday shows where we have great guests, uh, the Tuesday Comedy Cellar shows, uh, and it can be used on here when I when I do have a good guest. So, uh, you know, for instance, this Tuesday, tonight, we have Richard Klein, who my sister told me I said Robert Klein the other day, but you know it's Richard Klein's Larry from Three's Company. We have Amy Yazbek from Wings and Robin Hood Men in Tights and John Ritter's Widow, so there's the connection, and David Yazbek, the Tony winner for the band's visit, and uh, re just recently, we, me and Amy Yazbek went to go see Tootsie. So you can ask any of them a question, but I, I don't know if it'll work this quickly. You know, you may have to do that tonight, and I don't know how you get a message on Patreon, or even if you can sign up for Patreon, I think it starts December 1st. I don't know how it works. So if, in fact, I see that people somehow listen to this Went online, had a question. Maybe I can work it out uh, tonight. But otherwise, next week, my guest will be Sarah Silverman. So that's a good person to possibly ask. A, you know, we could probably get two questions in. Uh, Sarah Silverman will be on the Tuesday Comedy Seller Show with Mark Cohen, our good friend, um, who is the uh, host, the permanent host at the Comedy Seller Vegas, if that ever reopens. And our friend who's a manager, Pete Holmes' manager uh, for, for Crashing, uh, Dave Rath. Now, he's just a manager. He's not a comedian. But he's one of the funniest guys I know. You know, kind of like that. Uh, with the, we're talking about Lee Maracas and uh, Dave Elliott, you know, and these people that aren't comedians, but they're really funny. Dave's like that. And the four of us are so close. And I think, you know, I just think this is going to be fun. Uh, I, I don't think it'll be inside. I think it'll be a good time. And I need a good time. Because last week's episode sucked. It didn't suck. It became good. But if you could, if you saw it, you know I was very upset. Keith Robinson came on, totally forgot about the show. Came in, he's like, Jessica, I forgot about your show, and I got set. And that I took it completely personally, and it crushed my soul. I was like really, really upset about it. Uh, you can probably see my reaction, almost like in The Simpsons, where um, uh, Lisa tells uh, Chief Wiggum, Ralph Wiggums that she doesn't want to go out with him anymore, and Bart says, you can actually see the exact moment his heart breaks. You can probably see it on the actual video, which was a major bummer. Um, I was very upset about that. And then Rachel was 15 minutes late. Did she text me? Yes, I, maybe. I, you know, I had him in airplane mode. She was going to put the baby to sleep. Well, I don't think she would have been late for a spot. So it bothers me. And I haven't talked to her since. So I'm very upset about that. So I just needed a show. It's the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. We're just going to have a good time. And it's going to be great. And these are three really close friends and myself and it'll be a super fun time so anyway that is the story with patreon and the dave Juskow patreon page uh which is dave just and the nightfly um and 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 with the the ten dollar maggie level <laughs> you get the 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 bonus content which of yet i don't have yet but i will and here's what it is uh the the bonus level will be so far this is what i'm planning you tell me if i'm crazy this is what i'm planning i'm gonna have these 10 minute episodes they only get on patreon where i'm gonna take the <laughs> i'm gonna take the love boat openings the openings of the love boat just the openings i'm gonna play it on zoom with my friends you know gilbert frank sarah whoever it is right you know people that just are just going to laugh at the opening credits because we 
and us who listen to the Nightfly know the eclectic the eclecticness of the Love Boat openings. You know, when you're going to see the picture of Bob Denver and, uh, you know, Robert Hedges, I'm, I'm picking names out of a hat, Maureen Booker, any, any of the Brady Bunch or the Partridge, and you're going to see it as they come on. Well, you know we're going to be laughing, and we're going to be like, oh, no. I, I really think that'll be fun. They're like five or seven-minute pieces, and then we'll talk about what their parts were for like a couple of minutes, and that'll be it. And that is a little bit of bonus content, I think, will be really fun, and we'll give you a chuckle, and uh, nothing could be more important than that. Uh, when everything is kind of falling apart, it, it's all uh, good if you're, uh, uh, you know, not a Trump person and uh, bad if you are. But the whole thing is bad. Um, you know, the, I mean, uh, you know, with Trump not wanting to leave and then the secretary of state just saying, hey, we're excited about our second term. I mean, this is crazy talk, crazy talk. Um, I've heard from a lot of my listeners. Some of them forgive me for now uh, not appreciating Trump. And uh, some of them are like, welcome to the party. And that I guess now we know our, my listenership has been half and half, um, which is fascinating, really fascinating, right? But let me just explain something to you that I want to tell you one last time uh, to talk about this and how I feel and not to try and maybe lose any listeners, which I don't think I will over this, but I'm very angry at Donald Trump right now, as you know very angry that he's not conceding and that he's not uh, playing by the rules. Now, is this something that he hasn't done before? Of course not. It doesn't matter. But uh, it's obvious he lost. There is no fraud. It's been proven. And whatever the case may be, this is why I'm upset. And this is why I kind of stuck with him for four years. It. I don't know whether I told you this before, but my whole life has been respect for the president of the United States, respect for whoever's in office. I don't mind in the least when uh, my friends or even before when I was young, like Saturday Night Live, would make fun of the president. I don't care if people make fun. That's just not for me. I respect the office of the president of the United States so much. That's why I gave Trump kind of a pass for four years, because I say he's the president. Let him do what he's going to do, and we'll vote him out if necessary in four years. And, you know, I've always said that. But that's where I've always stood. And, I mean, so much so, when I realized it now, is that, like, in, in the 80s, when I was in an improv group, uh, I remember we were doing a, a joke on Quail. If you remember with the original George Bush and his vice president, Quail. And I felt horrible about doing it, but I said it because I knew... That's what they wanted me to do, and it would get a laugh, a, a laugh. But it is not how I felt, and I felt horrible about making fun of really this idiotic vice president. There's never been anything proven that he's a great man of any kind, um, and we know why he was chosen. And the same thing happened, I remember, uh, at that time when the original George Bush was in president. I was in a sketch group, and they wanted to make fun of the president. And I remember saying to this girl, and, you know, the thing whether it was funny or not doesn't matter it's just like i don't know don't you feel bad shouldn't we just respect the president and not make fun of him now that's not the way to do comedy the fact that i even have friends that respect me as any kind of comedian is a miracle because then it's being like what's the matter with you you know this is this is what comedy has been based on since the beginning of time you always you know uh, what do you call it uh make fun or or uh, lampoon a person in charge. That's been our thing. You know, unless you're, uh, you know, radical Muslim and you, you can't even draw a, a picture of Muhammad. Uh, so, so you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's been everybody's right to do. I just don't want to do it. So I was just always like, I don't make political jokes about our standing president. But now he's not our standing president anymore. And that's why I'm pissed. Because of all this nonsense after the presidency, and again, anybody that's okay with this, I got a problem with. This is not okay. He's lost. You don't have to concede, but you should, because the country is in bad shape. And this would be a really good time for things to be just a little bit normal. And that's Dave Juskow saying that, who's not normal at all. 
So anyway, that all being said, you know where I stand. Doesn't it doesn't mean like I love Biden or anything. I just just love I'm I'm in to whoever the president is, whether I win it, whether I personally voted win or lose, and hope for the best. And I love this country, and I like our rules. And I just uh, don't understand. Now there's been you know my favorite president in the whole world, which is John Adams, whether you guys know it or not. The original John Adams, not John Quincy Adams, the original John Adams, my favorite president in the whole world, didn't go to Jefferson's inauguration. That was a a really hard fought election battle in 1800. It was dirty. By that time, they hated each other, even though they were friendly and they got the country together. They hated each other. It was a very dirty battle. And at the end, John Adams, who was always the country come first, didn't not go to the inauguration just to be a baby. He went, he's like, eh, why don't we want to cause trouble? So he went out of almost respect for the office, but he didn't go. Neither did John Quincy Adams, because uh, those were some heavy battles. So that you don't care about. But unfortunately, you got to give up your seat. You know, I mean, it's just it's not helping anybody to when you've lost. You know what? Enough. You get it. You get it. It's not good. And, uh, you know, if you're sitting there going like, no, but he didn't lose, then I, I don't even know if I, uh, I don't think we can be friends. Yeah, it's that bad. So we got that off. Now you know how I feel. And uh, respect for the president of the United States. Most important thing you can have. I stand by my man. Uh, I'm just trying to see where else uh, we're going today. Uh, you know, it's funny with COVID is back. It turns out my sister is positive. She works at an office. You're going to get it. You work in an office. You don't know where everybody's going after work. Somebody, some, some lady had a son who had it, and she was coming into the office, and she got it. It's positive. Thanksgiving is canceled. Thanksgiving is canceled in Chicago. I had every intention of going to my sister's. I was looking forward to it. I told you my brother-in-law is an unbelievable cook. My brother-in-law is such a good cook. He makes turkey delicious, and turkey is gross. Turkey is a horrible food. And uh, it, it's, like, not tasty. It's not good. It's dry. So I really only eat it on Thanksgiving now because he makes it perfect. I don't know. He makes it somehow juicy and tender. He says it's in the carving. I think we might talk about this every Thanksgiving. But he's really good, and I was really looking forward to it. But now I don't know. So my sister says, well, I'll just quarantine for two weeks. And I'm just asking her a question. I'm like, well, isn't quarantining to make sure you don't get it? Is quarantining for two weeks, does that get rid of the virus? How does it work? I was asking her. She was getting very angry, but probably just out of nervousness. I was just asking questions. It's two weeks before Thanksgiving. So can you go to Thanksgiving when somebody's had it, but does it go away? In two weeks, where is the contagion factor? That's what's not clear. Obviously, if she gets a test and it's negative, it's done. But how long does it take to go away where we could feel comfortable inviting our mother over to Thanksgiving when somebody has had it? How long does it take before you can see that person again? I've certainly been around people that have had it, and now they don't. But is it? I know it's 14 days. You want to make sure you... Don't have so I guess that's what it is. When I was just asking her these questions, she was getting very angry. I guess it's 14 days to make sure even if you have it, it would be away. And on that note, let me tell you something about our friend Sophia Samrad, the British model, who was on our show two weeks ago on the uh, the Comedy Seller show. Now you know if you were listening to the Comedy Seller show, I've told you, and I should have had her on to well, she's not ready to talk about it. She has been sequestering, I guess that's the word, right? quarantining. Working, she's working on a movie. I'm not going to tell you who it's with. I'm dying to tell you who it's with because I want to. I just want to bring them up on charges. I want to call the Times. I'm angry. Uh, she is quarantining in a hotel in Brooklyn. The, the whole cast and crew of this movie are quarantining, so they begin filming the movie, and everybody's safe from COVID. 
Meanwhile, they bring in, for some God knows reason, it slips their mind. They bring in a hairdresser and a makeup person. They have COVID. For some reason, didn't quarantine the makeup and hair people. And now people might have COVID. And a lot of them are testing positive that have been sitting there for two weeks waiting all because of a couple of douchebags that weren't quarantining and the person in charge should be responsible. Now this set should be just stopped. The movie should be stopped from making you've ruined people's lives already. You've ruined their Thanksgivings. Stop the shoot. It's very selfish to continue whatever movie this may be. It better be the best fucking movie in history. You know, it's like I used to say, if you listen back to some of my podcasts, when they block off my street for movie making, it doesn't bother me if you're making Back to the Future 4. But if you're making, you know, Mulan 2, get the fuck off my block. So this better be a great movie, but you know it ain't going to be. And I'll tell you more, you know, when I get the chance to do it, when I can reveal everything. But how pissed would you be? You're sitting in a hotel, you got a new baby, and you're away from her for two weeks. So you're like, well, I guess the quarantine period is like, you get your hair done, all of a sudden you get COVID. Because somebody is so stupid, they didn't take that into consideration. Man, that drives me insane. I am clearly livid about it. Very upset about that, even though it doesn't affect me in any way. But yet it does. Because I spend a lot of time with Sophia, because she's awesome. And a really good friend. Unlike Rachel Feinstein, who's a horrible friend. Thank you. Um, I was talking to my sister today, and I'm writing a book. And um, it's called uh, I'd Rather It Smell Like Duty. And the reason, uh, no, my sister and I were talking the other day, and we were talking about Lysol, you know, and I was just like, where the hell is Lysol? Do you have any Lysol? And she's like, oh, we have some at work. And I'm like, how'd they get it? You know, so, you know, we've talked about this. Why is it so hard to find? What the hell's the matter with the Lysol people? They could be making a, a mint. They could be making billions of dollars. Why isn't it available? Anyway, my sister's like, I hate Lysol. I don't like the smell. And I'm like, I remember when we were kids and I would spray the bathroom with Lysol after I've been to the bathroom. She goes, oh, don't spray that. I'd rather it smell like duty, which is why I'm going to title my book. I'd rather it smell like duty. I'm kidding. Thank you so much, everybody. <laughs> I'm here all week. Well, we had to lighten things up. Because. <laughs> oh. You know, the COVID's been going up and everything is a disaster. And it wouldn't bother me so much. Well, it, of course it bothers me. It bothers me. I'm home a lot alone. I haven't been going out. I would if somebody asked. Uh, you know, I go out on Wednesdays. I didn't, I didn't do that this Wednesday. It was bad weather. And ironically, weather is a factor nowadays if you're eating outside. But the reason it's coming back, as you know, everybody was celebrating on Saturday for the Biden win. And we played the Star Wars thing. All the planets were celebrating. You know, it really felt like that. Now, that's a problem because of COVID. There should have been no celebrations, but you can't really blame anybody. What are you going to do? If they were out Sunday doing it again, you start blaming. But I think you got to let people loose. Uh, you know, we've, we've been inside for a year. Nothing's been done. You got a guy that's, you know, that maybe he'll take a chance at or whatever. So you get the sense that people can't contain themselves. But it's unfortunate because I think it caused a lot of problems. But what are you going to do? We can forgive, but now we're going to have to be in a lockdown again for another two months. Who knows? And But what, what you can't forgive is, and you know, the last month we were on when we did this, we had Sean Donahue on from Notre Dame. And I remember, we were talking about how two-faced his president was. It was the priest, uh, you know, who was sitting in the Trump Rose Garden without his mask on and then started suspending people that weren't wearing masks. And so... Notre Dame is a hot spot now for COVID because I, you know, I, I don't know if you watch college football, but I was actually watching Clemson versus Notre Dame last week. 
and Notre Dame beat Clemson. Now, they didn't have their number one quarterback in because he has COVID. And I don't know why he was there and on the field. But uh, Notre Dame ended up winning. And it was a big win with a backup quarterback. Still a big win. And all the fans that they allow in all came onto the field, which you usually do in college football, but not during a pandemic. And they all came together. And, you know, you could see pictures of it. And it was a mess, a COVID mess. Some not wearing masks, some wearing masks. It's a complete mess. And it's right near Chicago. And as you know, the mayor of Chicago has closed Chicago again and canceled Thanksgiving. And I would say in part due to this going down and somehow celebrating a football game that nobody's supposed to be celebrating. You know, you got to contain yourself. You don't need to be on that field. That's something you don't need to do. Would it have been a big win in a normal season with the regular quarterback playing? Yeah, but it ain't a normal season. The other quarterback was out and you still almost lost and had to go to double overtime. You should be ashamed of yourselves and you just spread the disease again. We're never going to get rid of this. You know, on the flip side, I'm just like, who cares? Let's just keep celebrating. Let's everybody get it and just get it over with. You know, I mean, everybody's feeling the same. Some people are going to die. What are you going to do? Speaking of which, sad news. I have a friend who I've mentioned on this podcast before. I've been to her house with her family and she's dying. Not of COVID. That's the weird part. I've had like several friends die, not of COVID, just a freak drinking accidents. And uh, she's in dire straits right now, but I don't think she's going to make it. And it's kind of sad. And uh, I've been talking to her family and everything. And uh, yeah, it's too bad. She's really great. I don't, I think I've shown pictures or definitely talked about her. And uh, yeah, I feel bad for her family. They're really nice people and they've been so nice to me. And you know, that makes me feel, and I feel bad for them. And I'll tell you more about it next week. I'll keep you posted, but I don't think it's going to end well. So, uh, as we keep going back and forth on uh, good and bad stuff. Uh, you, know, you know what? Uh, why don't I bring in uh, Sophie Ponchak right now? Jeez, that sounds horrible. You know what? Well, let's talk about one other thing before we bring in our guest and have a good time. <laughs> it's just like I'm so stupid. I end, I do that all the time. I uh, I think I did that on one of the Tuesday shows where I'm like, oh, it's so sad to hear about somebody. I don't even know what I was talking about. And then I just was like, anyway, on that note, I'll see you next week. You know, we got to talk about. Let me tell you this one thing. I finally watched that show, Be Positive, which is on after Young Sheldon, as you know, because there's a hot girl on it, right? Um, she's actually a really good uh, actress on Broadway, but you know, it's a hot girl that likes to drink and party and everything. And you know, I'm probably not going to continue watching her because they're trying to get her off drinking and partying. So that's where I leave. I don't want her to reform. I want the fantasy of just this drunken girl who's just a fun girl. Um, but she, this guy's got to get a kidney. That's the, uh, the the premise. Anyway, I watched it. It's it's really bad. It's really bad. If you watch it, you would be like, how could Jessica like something like this? It's, you know, it's like funny. It must be what people think when they're watching the Big Bang Theory and they're like, how can Jessica? I mean, the canned laughter is just like driving you insane. But the Big Bang Theory, I feel like is half and half. Uh, like, I think in the later seasons, you can tell it's just can, can. But I really feel in the first couple of seasons, it was actually audience laughter because there is some really funny stuff. But this be positive. It's awful. But I'll continue to watch it anyway. Anyway, I'm watching it. The girl has a job driving senior citizens to their doctor appointments and one of the senior citizens in the bus with 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 just a it's just a part but it's like an extra part is bernie copel i'm talking about doc on the love boat i'm talking about the guy from get smart i'm talking about a guy who's made an amazing career being character actor i didn't even know he was still around i mean i knew he was still alive but i didn't know he was still working because he's thinking he's in the 90s and he's sitting on this bus. He's got a small part. He's like, they had one line. And I'm like, wait, I'm positive that's Bernie Coppell. Why would they put Bernie Coppell in unless they're expanding the part? That was the pilot. Uh, so that was, you know, it's like that time. You ever see the Seinfeld episode? Uh, speaking of our set with uh, 
Mr. Carlin from the Bob Newhart show, and he's actually on a bus that Kramer's doing the tour, and he's also on the bus. It's probably the same bus they use for every time when they're doing a bus shot. And Mr. Carlin just has like one thing, like, hey, do we get do we get to eat on this? I mean, I'm just like, but that's Mr. Carlin from uh, the Bob Newhart show. Why does he only have this small part? But I guess that's the way it works in Hollywood is that these guys are just, they work, they're working actors. And when you get a gig like the Love Boat, you know, like, well, I got a part, but now I'm going to continue to do more parts. But sometimes you can't get out of it because maybe, I don't know. I just thought he wasn't working anymore. I was like upset about that. But anyway, okay. With that all being that old person stuff talking about that only uh, some listeners would know about. Uh, how many times can you mention Love Boat in one sentence? Uh, but uh, let's bring in our 25-year-old friend of 26 uh, or, you know, somewhere in her 20s, uh, the very lovely uh, Sophie Ponchak. And um, we're, we will uh, be talking to her. And what's it like? being 20 where everybody's uh, getting a, a, a pass in their 20s from old people uh, during this time we're going to uh, talk to her right after this the night fly Dave Jeskow hello everybody and uh, let me introduce my guest for uh, this evening or this afternoon whenever anybody listens to the actual podcast I never know uh, this is my friend Sophie Ponchak, and uh, I am uh, very close friends for many years with her father and her grandfather. No, I made that part up. I don't know. I just wanted <laughs> to sound really old for a second. But yes, this is Sophie, and I will tell you why she's here in a second. Uh, good afternoon. <laughs> ah, thank you for having me. Excited to be here. Yeah, it's amazing. You just uh, got up and you just look like that. I wouldn't say that, but thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, I feel like you are that kind of girl. My sister and I talk about, uh, I mean, you're very pretty. I mean, obviously, if you're listening on the podcast, you can't see. But if you are watching the the uh, YouTube portion of the show, you can see how very naturally pretty she is. Uh, I only bring it up today because we are going to talk about something about that in a way. But it is my, my sister and I, for years, when we were way when younger than you, we were always talking about girls that look like you, uh, that, just, you know, just like, like, a, for example, I have my friend Katie, who's now in her forties, but I met her when she was 19 and we've been friends for years and everybody, her friends and everybody, they all stayed over at my house once. And I remember she woke up and she was just like, she had slept on the floor. And, uh, cause I just had everybody over one night, you know, we all got drunk and hang out. And then she was on the floor, she slept on the floor. And then she like put her arms up and she was talking to me in the morning. And I'm like, so you just wake up looking like that? And I remember telling my sister, and she didn't even think, you know, she was like, what are you talking about? And I told my sister, I'm like, yeah, she just wakes up looking like that. It's amazing. You know, it's just a regular person. It's not a, you know, a model or anything. It's just like, we're, we're obsessed with uh, people that can do that. I, I feel like you're one of those people. <laughs> Thank you. I see like a huge difference between myself when I'm like done up wearing makeup and like do my hair versus when I roll out of bed. But I, other people tell me that I don't look any different. So it's weird. Well, like my cousin would always get on me. She'd always be like, why don't you wear makeup? I'm like, I'm wearing makeup. I'm just not wearing like blue eyeshadow. Like, right. It would be worse <laughs> if you just really, I mean, you would be a horrible person if you were just like, I'm so hot every time, everywhere I go. Yeah. You know I mean? Right. You don't want to be like that. And you do really come off. I mean, the couple of times we've spoken, you do come off really cool and normal <laughs> you know I, I don't know what that means but <laughs> but i will tell this one other story of like one of i mean obviously i've known you since you were born mm -hmm. uh which is funny in itself but the the one time uh that i saw you once you were i guess about 18 17 18 uh maybe you remember it was my birthday and i always mm -hmm. have my birthday at the rooftop or i used to at the kimberly hotel rooftop before i used to have shows at the comedy cellar and uh, Sophie and her father and brother, who's really great too, older brother, came. And her older brother, was, we have the same birthdays, Alex. Mm -hmm. uh, so August 13th. So he came and was going to turn 21. I guess I had the birthday August 12th. And he came and he showed the ID to the doorman and said, hey, I'm going to be 21 in a couple of hours. And the door guy goes, get the hell out of here. 
And um, the reason I know this story is because Sophie told me the story because I'm like, wait, aren't you? From the rooftop. <laughs> You're right, from the rooftop, right? I was like, aren't you only 18? She goes, yeah. She just walked right in. There was no way. He didn't even check for ID. Even if he did, he's like, yeah, go ahead. I mean, you know, they want pretty people up in that rooftop anyway, but it was just so funny that your brother was technically of age. That guy was just being a dick. And if you'd probably showed him the ID, he probably would have just said, go ahead. But, you know, he was being a wise guy, you know, which was I would have done the exact same thing. And it was just hilarious for you telling me the story on the rooftop. <laughs> like that, like, what are you talking about? I had no problems getting in. Really? But that was a fun night, right? That's a that's a nice rooftop. And that was. a Yeah, a good evening. that was really fun. And so we had to leave early because my brother was waiting. Yeah. He, he ruined everything. He ruined my birthday <laughs> and his own. How dare he? I believe that was the day that your dad took him. Your dad, for some reason, has been obsessed with that stupid bar McSorley's for so many years. Yeah. That, that bar sucks. Did he ever bring you there? I don't th I think that was the only time I went because he was like, we have to take Alex um, on his 21st birthday. We have to go there. So we he all was got insistent. There. I wanted to stay on the rooftop. I was having a great time. Yeah. Uh, it was super fun, right? Yeah. It was really fun. Um, but I honestly, I don't remember that bar that well, but yeah, my dad thought it was like, he was obsessed. He's been obsessed with that bar since the eighties. It's a stupid bar. It's like one of the first bars in the city has sawdust on the floor. You can't eat anything there, you know, because it's gross and they just have their own style beer. I mean, I guess I could see if, I don't know. I think I take my son anywhere else on his 21st birthday. Meanwhile, you know, they didn't even let girls in there up until, Maybe the 90s, I think. You know, I feel like, why would he want to take him to a bar like that? <laughs> There's no girls, yeah. I mean, maybe in the 70s they let girls in, but it's where, like, you know, it was like only, I'm trying to think when we went there in the 80s if they, they must have allowed girls in then. I can't be, they didn't really allow black people to vote while we were born. So eh, who knows? Uh, <laughs> that's how old me and your father are. They only yeah. allowed black people to vote when the year we were born <laughs> think about that that if that doesn't make me feel old then nothing will but sophie i and first of all i'm so sick of the name sophie uh no it's a great name and i don't know any <laughs> ugly sophies because i know sophie's sophia's and mm -hmm. it's driving me crazy because i can't get them all together it's like that nowadays it's elisa elise uh Alita, you know like i mean it's just everybody's name is so similar and stuff but i know three Sophie's mm -hmm. and Sophia's. I'm getting I them all confused. Sophia. What? My legal name is Sophia. Oh, it is? Mm-hmm. Oh, so annoying. I know, it's confusing. So why do you make it Sophie? Well, it's just like a nickname, I guess. It's only bothering me because my niece's name, and I talk about her all the time, is it was Dorian. But we always called her Dory, and then she actually hated it so much she got it legally changed last year to Dory. Dory? Isn't Dorian? I don't know. I guess it's a, it's a woman's name. Well, my sister named her that because she thought it would be fun calling her Dr. Dorian. And it turns out she's actually going to be a doctor. And That's not funny anymore. Hated, yeah, she didn't find it funny at all. And she didn't want it on her diploma because they have to put your legal name on the diploma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she legally changed it. Can you imagine? No, I, I would never do that. I think it's fun to have a secret name. When you say your real name is Sophia, I think that's exciting. Not as exciting as a real, I mean, when you're at, yeah. you're actually replacing a letter. So it's different, but you are replacing it, right? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not good at spelling. Anyway, I asked you on the show today for multiple reasons. Um, number one, you're in your 20s. You're living in New York City during COVID. Yeah. Right there, fascinating story. I was shocked when I found out you'd been living here the whole time. Most people your age left town and moved in with their parents. Yeah. I know why you didn't want to do that, but <laughs> how has how has it been here for you somebody who who you know my opening joke when opening for Jim Gaffigan was I never thought I would live in an age where people would feel bad for people your age you know like I feel bad for people in their 20s you know older people it's supposed to be like, goddamn kids don't respect nothing 
And then, you know, you're just like, oh, I feel horrible for people in their 20s. But everyone feels bad for somebody your age. That's all. But you're right. I mean, you're not living the New York City lifestyle you were supposed to lead. That's why you moved here. Right. But you've been having an okay time, right? Yeah, I think I'm just like so optimistic when it started. I was like, it's going to be two weeks. Like, see you guys soon. And then even now, like they're saying, we're going to like have another lockdown. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, no, it's going to be a full solid year. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, trying to stay positive. No, a lot of my friends like are leaving the city permanently. And I think it's like also interesting to watch. I feel like people are going one of two ways. Like there's definitely a lot of people moving in with their parents and kind of like going backwards. But I also feel like on the opposite end of the spectrum, there's so many people who are like getting engaged and having babies and buying houses and like out of nowhere. And it's kind of crazy. And then I'm just kind of doing neither of the two. Yes. <laughs> And you have ro- roommates or or a roommate, right? So, so you I have a roommate. Yeah, she was gone for the first like three, I guess more than three months. She was gone like March through August. Oh, she's back now, but she's she has a boyfriend, so she's away a lot with him. So she's gone this week. Um, but I mean, you were you were alone the whole from March for August. Just I mean, the- yeah, I have a dog. Yeah, no, I know you. You you love animals, which I makes do. me happy. Is that dog around? Yes, he's on the couch. Oh, uh, um, I mean, how did you deal with it being alone? And I, I've talked to you before. It seemed like you were doing okay. Yeah, honestly, I didn't really mind it. I feel like because like no one else was doing anything, so I didn't have like FOMO. Right. Uh, that, um, that's, my whole podcast has been on that. I was able to take care of so much because there was no fear of missing out anymore. Yeah. Right, right. So I just like did a lot of puzzles. It was really relaxing. Um, I went to Central Park a lot with my dog. And yeah. But you also have a job too. So you were I, able yeah, to- I also have a job. Um, I'm like was still working full time. So that kept me busy at least. But it's like, I got a call from your dad and he said, Sophie wants to be on The Bachelor. Uh, do you know anybody? And I said, uh, actually, I do. You know, I get calls like that all the time, I guess, because they I think I'm in. I don't know. I'm the guy everybody calls, but I do know somebody everywhere. So I was able to put you in touch with the people at The Bachelor. I mean, has since we've talked last, has there been any other um, other things going on? Like, I know you got, you know, they liked you and they called you which mm-hmm. makes perfect sense I mean, you're perfect for that show i agree um i don't know if they thought so because i didn't hear back at least for this upcoming season um and they're shooting so i didn't get picked which is kind of a bummer but um i did get to talk with the casting with a casting person there and she was lovely and seemed to really like me um and you just have to fill out like an application submit photos and then submit a video um and they give you like questions to answer during the video so it's pretty straightforward um and i'm hoping maybe next year i'll give it another shot this year they because of covid like normally on the show they travel all over the world yeah this is a better year not to be like stuck at a resort yeah they're stuck at a i i saw the bachelorette they're stuck at a quality inn (laughs) <laughs> I mean, you know, it's a, you're doing the right thing. You you got yeah, lucky. So I think next year will be better. First of all, I think that ironically, you have things going against you, which again, uh, if, folks, if you're watching on, uh, you know, on, on the video portion, you, you would say like, what could she possibly have going against? She's perfect for the, the batch. I mean, you look like all the girls that look on that show that that's <laughs> not meant to be. Uh, they're all really pretty. Uh, but I think you're uh, a little too smart. Uh, <laughs> from from what I've seen from watching The Bachelor, you seem a little too smart. And you're from New York City. I don't think I've ever seen a contestant from New York City on the show, ever. No, they've had a few guys from New York City. Right, and never women. Yeah, maybe like one or two women, but a lot of women from the South. Right, yes, California, that's what I'm saying. Uh, from the South, from the Midwest. Uh, right, yeah. never. So I think, and maybe... Yeah, really, not even from California. I think it seems like the South and the Midwest. Mm-hmm. And I think they want um, people that aren't that bright. <laughs> I just get the feeling you might be too smart, especially what your job is and how you 
you know, your job is helping others. I, I don't think they uh, care for that. <laughs> I th- well, I think they want people to that are like, they can mold and I don't want to say manipulate, but probably manipulate. And I agree a hundred percent. Yes. Acting a certain way and like going along with, you know, the plot and storyline that they have in their head. So. And know. unfortunately you come across uh, kind of smart. And uh, right, uh, which is, a, you know, it's funny. It's like everything that our uh, parents taught us in the 80s and stuff like, oh, you got to dumb it down for a man. You know, now everybody has been taught not to do it. <laughs> yeah, which, of course, is very sexist. But that's the way the world worked back in the day. If you've ever seen an episode of Mad Men. Uh, but, yeah, it's just uh, kind of funny. And talking when we talked on the phone, I'm like, boy, she sounds she sounds too smart, <laughs> like you're, the way you carry yourself and talk. It's just kind of funny that um, I couldn't even believe you wanted to be on the show. And then I said, why do you want to be on the show? Because I didn't want to. I mean, you were perfect. Like once I said, you know what? I don't mind calling in this favor because she is perfect for the show. But and then when you answered the question, you know, why you wanted to be on it was the perfect answer. And I think maybe that's the problem. It's just you just didn't. It sounded real like you were just looking to uh, I don't know what was the answer you said it was perfect you worded it perfect and it wasn't set up um I don't really remember I think you were like why do you want to like meet your husband on tv I'm like I don't care how I meet him like I just want to meet him like and that was the other thing like a cool way to meet someone like you tell your grandkids like oh we met on the bachelor like the odds of them you know it working out and being successful are like rare, but I think it's just as rare to like meet someone on a dating app and that's a boring story. So that's true. And that was the other reason I had you on because, you know, we've been talking and this was the point of having you on. It's like, you're having trouble finding a man in New York city. And it's not just you. I have another friend, your age, same story. She was just afraid to come on the podcast and talk about it. No. <laughs> I heard from many girls in their 20s who are like, why am I having trouble finding a man here in New York City where you would think would be the ultimate place besides COVID? What is the story? Why are men such idiots? How can this be? I don't know. I think you would have to ask a 20 something year old man that. Um, I don't know if it's just like endless options. And like, I feel that way too, where I think no one wants to settle and people in New York are very like, driven in every sense of their lives and they want the best job and they want like the best social life and they want to find like the most amazing person and like don't really want to like find someone and build something they're more just like looking for the perfect person but I do that too so I can't really like pass judgment there um but I don't know it's funny like I meet so many guys who are like in their early mid thirties and the thought of settling down is not even like on their radar. And I'm like, like, you want to be like 45 when you're having kids? Like that sounds miserable to me, but they're just like, yeah, I don't really know like what I'm looking for. I'm like, but they say that they want to have a family someday. I'm like, when is someday? Excellent point. You're going to be bald. (laughs) I've had this theory for a long time that men um, give up at around 45. uh, Mm -hmm. And and 45 is a long time. And women kind of give up. And I don't mean give up, but I'm just like they they take it down a notch (laughs) uh, at 33, uh, where they're just like, I've gone out enough. I'm I'm done. You know, it's just going to happen or it's not going to happen. You know, I mean, I know it's like uh, weird, but yeah, guys are just, they'll, they'll just keep going. I feel like it's, um, I feel like it's almost the, well, this is coming from a man of the woman's responsibility to really tie him down. <laughs> no, you can't tie him down. He doesn't want to be. <laughs> right. Of course. Um, it's just so funny that, you know, you, again, my sister and I would talk about this all the time. You know, we always are like, well, how can she have problems? But yeah, I mean, the thing is people are, You can't, you got to like who you like. And that brings me to, I guess, my next question. First of all, I'm going to share the screen here so you can see some stuff. If you don't, don't look at that. That's nothing. What kind of guys do you like? Do you ever see the show? Okay, yeah. Ever see Emily in Paris? Uh, No, but I've seen a lot of people making fun of it. Also, did you know it's supposed to be Emily in Paris? So it rhymes. No, I did not uh, know that. Netflix made that clarification. Oh. Uh, well, this guy on the right, 
is the guy I've been talking about on the podcast. This is uh, the guy. What, what's his name? Uh, Lucas, Lucas something or other. The guy the right. I've been talking about. It, I think he's the hottest guy I've ever seen. Yeah, he's beautiful. <laughs> All right, so you do find him beautiful. Is that your type? Yeah, unfortunately. Sweet magic. That, that, see, now that's what we want to hear. And this yeah, guy on the left, the who's the hair, older guy, the that what? Oh, yeah, the eyes are ridiculous. It's yeah. uh, Gabriel. That's yeah. his name of the show. Mm -hmm. uh, and this guy on the left, who's a little older, would you like a guy like that? No. Okay, so you are looking for this type of guy. Yeah. These type of guys on the right, you probably meet but they are rare for people like me to ever see even on the street. <laughs> um, no, I'd say I meet more um, of the guy on the left. Oh, <laughs> of course. The guy yeah, on the right, I never see guys that look like that in New York. And I, I boggled my mind. I'm like, if anywhere. Yeah, well, know, that guy, I mean, that guy, is a, that guy is a movie star. I mean, How old is he? Do you know? I think he's in his 30s, early, obviously early 30s. I'm guessing. I I, I uh, forgot to look it up. His Lucas, yeah, I think he's in his early 30s. But I've talked about him on the show when I, you know, tell my listeners, I'm like, Emily Powers is a great show, and there's this the hottest guy <laughs> in it. Like, I mean, he's just ridiculously hot. Or what about somebody oh. like? <laughs> yeah. You oh, you like? Okay, I just showed a picture of Harry Styles. Show this, but but look at the next photo. He's wearing a kilt. Does that yeah. take it away? You're still in. I'm still in. I uh, Fascinating. Harry is a tough one for me because I'm a big Taylor Swift fan. And so um, I don't know how I feel about him like as a human being, but they seem to be on good terms. So I'm willing to. <laughs> See that I can't even look at this picture where a kilt is bothering me because here I'm like, what? he's really good looking. You see his, his Vogue cover. He's wearing a dress. This is the Vogue cover. Oh, that's where I took it from. He's the first it. solo man to ever be on the Vogue cover. Yeah. Yeah. I'm uh, well, let me ask you a question about this. This is Claire Crowley. Are you watching The Bachelorette this season? I am. Yes. Now, this was her being engaged previous to this, which they never even touched upon no. on The Bachelorette. And you heard what happened um, that, you know, she, uh, you know, I mean, you were watching. Right. So I don't usually watch i i always tape it because i want to see the last episode i like the last two episodes but i can't watch two hours every day that's just not for me I, unless i'm watching a full season which i did with uh what's her name jojo i watched that full season because i was watching it with people from work and we were talking about it every week and it was kind of fun mm -hmm. but i watched the episode where Crow claire crowley left and I was like, when Chris was talking to her and saying, um, you know, what the hell? I was hoping he was going to rip her a new asshole for ruining the game. And oh, then they, oh, they planned that whole thing. You huh. think so? They had to have Tasia quarantining there for like a week before the switch even happened because of COVID. Well, maybe they always have because of COVID. They had a plan to have yeah. somebody yeah. just in case anyway. I mean, but it was I, I don't feel like that was planned because I think that messed with the whole formula. You know, listen, this if you don't know this girl who's the bachelorette, Claire Crawley, who was older too. I think she was like 38, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, she met this guy, uh, sparks happened, and she didn't want to date anyone else. And after the fourth episode said, I want to leave the show. I'm in love, it's over, which is then you say, well, that is what the show is, but it's also a game show. And they let her off completely. And the guy, I guess, had the same feelings for Dale. Is that his yeah. name? Mm -hmm. um, what do you think of that? Do you think she should have stayed with the show and gone with it all? Or did she make the right move? No. I You have done. You wanted to be on TV. <laughs> uh, yeah, but so many people are, like, giving Claire shit. But I agree with her like also if I was 38 and on this show like I wouldn't want to waste any more time and like I'm kind of the same way where if I like someone I like them immediately and there's only like 30 guys on the show if I met 30 guys on the street the odds of me liking like more than one or two of them are pretty slim like oh I feel like pretty immediately you're only going to be drawn to one or two and then you just have to kind of like play the role and pretend to be indecisive for the rest of the show when really you kind of know Okay, so what about the fact that you know and you meet a guy, you know, that you like a lot, and you're going to get married. I mean, that's mm -hmm. how the show ends. Um, 
what happened? Like you said, we met on The Bachelor, but then your kids watch The Bachelor and they see you making out with all these other guys. I mean, it's documented. We yes. all know that a, a wife or, or mother has been with other guys, but then it's documented, you know, and there it is. And, uh, you know, how does that affect, you think, maybe the relationship? It probably, I mean, you'd hope it would not, but. No, it definitely does. Like, there's been couples who have broken up because, like, when they watch it back, like, the girl will see that the guy was really invested in this other woman and they like can't handle watching it and on like both sides for the bachelor and the bachelorette it's like ended relationship so that's why i think another reason why it was good that claire did that because dale doesn't have to like watch back like her yeah. with someone else and her questioning things up until the very end like he knows that it was always him so i mean um and that was my other thing like you know if you if you get on the show which you should we'll, we'll try again We'll get yeah. to that. Yeah. Um, you know, do you have any, like, wh what do you think it's like, like kissing on camera? Like when you know everybody's watching, these are supposed to be intimate moments. Are you good with that? I think I would honestly just have to like pretend the camera's not there, not just for the kissing scenes, but like, because I would probably like, get nervous on camera. I would just. I well, that's, that's, that's the thing, you know, it's like all, uh, you know, like when we, that episode I watched, they were making out heavily, you know, her and yeah, Dale. Yeah, you like feel uncomfortable watching it. It was, it was sexy and uncomfortable at the same time, you know, because uh, they were so into it, like that it was kind of more sexy than you would normally see on The Bachelor. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I'm just saying like, geez, I don't know. I don't know whether I would uh, feel comfortable that way. You know, I mean, I guess that that's how porn is done. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's like... Uh, it, it is very intrusive and and that's the thing I you know a lot of people can't handle but you feel like you could like I mean you've been brought up in a place where pretty much cameras are everywhere and it probably doesn't make that much of a difference to you right, right. yeah yeah but then all you know all of your secrets and your your that's schemes so and everything it's yeah. all I don't care about them like filming me making out with someone but I yeah I'm just scared that they're going to edit me to look like really mean or really. That's what they do. Pathetic, which is, yeah. Totally and you crazy. sign a contract saying I have no problems with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. And my, yeah, my friends are always like, you're going to be the villain. I'm like, I don't think I would be the villain, but. I have a friend. He's a comic. His name is Joe Matteries. And maybe he's, I don't know if you ever watched America's Got Talent. And uh, he was on the show and they, <laughs> he, he, he killed it like the first night, you know, he was doing great and was really exciting. And then the second time he went on, it was just in front of the four judges, which is the worst thing for comics. It's so un an unfair, uh, you know, a test, you know, if you don't have the audience there, it's not going to work. So it's only right. the four judges and they edited it in a way where he just looked so mean and nasty. Oh. They played uh, evil music when yeah. he was uh, when he was leaving and everything i mean they really made him look like a complete asshole and i don't i thought he's always funny and his set wasn't that bad but they made it look like he was just awful and angry at the judges and you know they edited it that way and it's, it's possible it could have affected his career you know these are the kind of things yeah. uh, you know do you think about those kind of things before you sign up you don't care you're all in <laughs> I mean I think about I more think about like if I were to like because you have to quit your job to go on it and if you get kicked off like on the first or second night like you don't even get the publicity out of it so like then but, you're just like left with nothing and you kind of did screw yourself it uh, if you don't win but you at least make it far I feel like you get enough of like a following on social media that you can kind of use that that's true too but I feel somebody like you the job that you have especially the kind of job and i don't know if you want to mention it or not yeah do you, you do want to mention it because it's I mean, pretty, we can, yeah i uh do probably a good idea because you fundraise so this would yeah. be helpful i fundraise uh for memorial sloan kettering cancer center in new york yeah it's a pretty serious job and uh it's uh, tough you know and, and they rely on people like sophie to keep that the best cancer hospital in the country possibly uh, maybe even the world to keep going and it's thanks to people like sophie who uh get donations and things like that so they can keep it going because uh you know my father went there and i lots of other people i know and they come into the city and you know they're great there 
And I, my guess is that they, I can't imagine being your boss and not, and this, you know, this is going to sound horribly sexist, but when you're pregnant and if I was a boss, I could see getting angry. I know that sounds horrible. I know, but it's like, oh crap. I mean, I mean, I've been in jobs and I worked at you know a law firm for 20 years where the associates have gotten pregnant and I know the boss are like, oh, that's wonderful. But in their mind, they're like, now what are we going to do? You know, because it's a, an unfortunate burden. I mean, think about people on um, television shows, you know, like that, you know, I'm like, you know, the writer's like, oh, I'm so happy for you. And the women are like, isn't that great? But then they're like, now what the hell are we going to do? What the hell are we going to do? Like in Friends, if Phoebe comes in, like I'm pregnant, like what the hell are we going to do? I mean, they work it into the show, but do we yeah. really need a season where Phoebe gives birth to triplets? You know, I mean, it, that, that's the thing. I love it, that part. it worked out. They worked it out perfectly. And it's just kind of funny that they had Jennifer Aniston get pregnant when she wasn't pregnant. It's kind of odd when they do it the opposite way for no necessity. Uh, but, um, so it, I know that sounds awful, but it's a fact, you know, not just men, women just like, ugh. now what are we going to do? These things happen. But um, with you, I think if uh, somebody so delightful says, I want to go on The Bachelor and you go, I feel like they'd give you your job back once it's over and they'd be so happy for you because you're doing the work of Jesus. Uh, you know, like, I mean, why would you not let somebody who's good at their job fundraising for for a cancer you know, to save lives, have it back. Yeah, I would hope so. My boss is um, a very big Bachelor fan too. Oh, well, that's a helpful. Freak, so I think that would work in my favor. Um, but when you go on it, I don't think you can tell anyone. So I think I would just have to like- Well, you'd have to, no, like, you'd have to, you don't think you would be able to tell your bosses that I'm going on The Bachelor? You, you can't tell them, what? Wait, <laughs> why can't you tell them? I, you just can't tell them I, what I, happens. Probably. I just heard that, like, you, I mean, you can't go around telling people that you're going to be on it. So. Right. But I think you can you tell totally your immediate, I mean, what are you not going to tell your parents? You know, you got to be able to tell yeah. somebody. So I think yeah. you tell your immediate boss, you hope they're not going to spread it around. But even if they do, who cares? They don't know the outcome. You're going to be right. sequestered, right. which is kind of weird because now you're probably like, I don't ever want to be sequestered again. So. You know, now people are probably not going to want to be on The Bachelor because, like, I don't want to do any more quarantining where I can't see people anymore. Because <laughs> remember, you'd be doing, yeah. you'd be getting out of it and then going right back into it because they right. live in a bubble, right? Yeah, you. I mean, you don't have your cell phone. Wouldn't that be odd that you would get it next year and you're like, oh, all I do is quarantine. That's all I, I do. That's my whole life for the past three years. <laughs> But, oh, right, you can't even have your cell phone or Zoom chat or anything. Yeah, that's got to be weird. Yeah. But I know you want it, and I want you to be on it so badly. I mean, that would be so terrific. Yeah, me too. Uh, Sophie, you are a delight. Uh, one other question before I let you go. Um, have you been going out at all to, like, any of the restaurants? Yes, yes, um, quite a bit. I'm going out tonight. Um, what? I wasn't told. To, I mean, that's cool. I just wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, one thing that I like love about the new Cuomo rule that you can't get drinks without food is when you go on dates, like they have to take you to dinner now, which I've always been a fan of. I don't That's like That's really funny. Drinks, so you have but... been going out on dates during COVID? Yes. Uh, interest. That's really interesting. Um, yeah. What's that like? Is I guess it's normal, right? I mean, you're just sitting outside and it's normal that's like the main difference i would say though is like i feel like before guys would always just like want to get drinks and now you actually have to like sit down and have a meal with the person which i like better but um i think people are like mixed that's together. true that was always my dating is like we get drinks and if we're hitting it off we get dinner like right then and there right then and, yeah yeah and we move on it seemed like yeah. a pretty okay plan at um, besides, you know, actually making a, a complete date where it should be, I guess, dinner. I, I don't know who came up with dinner in a movie. Um, I can't even imagine sitting on a first date in a movie theater with somebody I don't know. I've never done that. No. But dinner makes sense. You yeah. Know, that, 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 that's, that's a date. I went on many dinner dates um, that were lovely. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of funny that you can't just, uh, yeah, sorry, can't just be drinks anymore. It's got to be all in. Yeah. Do you eat inside? Um, I've done both. Yeah, me too. Yeah. 
I like eating inside. I have no problems well, with not it. Well, cold. I don't like, I like being inside now. Yeah, exactly. Although, have you seen some of the places, I know you live near me, and some of the places in our area have like been really doing it up and making things nice. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like really making these structures on the street, these little. But I'm like, at that point, it's like indoors. Yeah, <laughs> it's almost indoors. Exactly. Which I yeah. think they don't, you know, they just have to have like one area open, but they got the heating lamps and it's actually kind of pleasant. Um, yeah. And it could be very pleasant being very Christmassy. Unfortunately, everything is kind of closing up again. Uh, do, are you, I don't, let me ask you this. Cause I'm all in. I love that everything closes at 10 or 11 now. And I've been getting no. home by midnight. <laughs> I mean, it's always been like, I've been getting home at five or six in the morning. And now it's like, kind of like, well, got the whole night left. <laughs> you don't like it. Mm, no, but I mean, I wouldn't really, I mean, it wouldn't really make sense for restaurants to stay open. Like I, I think it was 12, right? And now it's 10, which I think it was 11. It was 11. Okay. Now it's um, 11. Do you have a date tonight or just yeah. going out with friends? Oh, you have a date. Is it a first date? No. It's a oh, how interesting. Um, well, that's exciting, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> do you go on a lot of third dates? Oh, no. I normally like, well, I'll normally cut it off after like two or three if I'm not feeling it. Actually, I used to I used to be worse. I used to like kind of let it go to the second and third date, fourth date, and like I wasn't really feeling it. But now I just if I'm not into it on the first date, I'm like it's not going to get any better. So yeah, I've actually uh, I have emails which I could share with uh, my listeners of girls telling me, uh, listen, I'm just going to level with you. I don't think it was working. Uh, so good luck to you. And, uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So, you know, once, once I got till about in the early thirties, like around 34, uh, girls were just like, here's what I'm doing. You're figuring it out much earlier, which is smart. Mm -hmm. But I think by the thirties, the, when the girls are in their early thirties, they're just like, yeah, listen, let's not do this. Uh, they just, you know, just, which, you know, good. I was like, thank you for your honesty. And yeah. Like, you know, thank you for the closure. Thank you for the honesty. Yeah, I appreciate it when people are like up front. It's embarrassing as hell, but uh, obviously I've kept all of those texts and letters, <laughs> which are. But really do you do you return the favor if you're not interested in someone? Do you email them? And tell no, no, them? no. I'm a guy. I'm a coward. Absolutely not. No, I string them See, along. This is the issue. Yeah. No, I'm a coward. I. Uh, so you just don't talk to them ever again. Uh, no, I do. I just, uh, I yes, I'm awful. You slow fade. I mean, if we're dating, I will, you know, close it up. But yeah, I slow fade. I, I'm, I can't deny we're all cowards. Very, this is a problem. Mm -hmm. We are cowards. We don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Yeah, um, but uh, yeah, it's very cowardice. But it hurts feelings more if you just don't say anything. It does, but uh, I don't know any guys that are that cool. Or, I don't either. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm sorry. I was just being, I mean, I have to be honest. I mean, just, yeah, we're all assholes. Yeah. So we meet that one where we can be completely honest, I guess. Oh, let me show you one thing before you leave. I forgot to show you this. You'll love this. I don't think you've ever seen this before. Um, here it is. Guess who this person is? No. <laughs> Inside. Yeah. Is that my dad? It is your dad. <laughs> From 1984. Oh my god, the visor. Isn't that great? He used to uh, work at the bar at college, checking IDs. Wait, and the so best... this is, I thought you were like filming a skit or something. No, we were. Yeah. Oh, you were, you were. But he was the guy working. The skit is, the, the gag was that everybody had to look like their ID picture or they couldn't get in. Mm -hmm. so they had to, like sometimes fly their sister in if they're you know putting their arm on her or them or something like that that's the gag you got to grow a mustache because you have a mustache in the picture you know it's a hilarious gag but your dad was you know he was the guy working at the pub so we just you and he was my friend so and he was a delight so we used him and it's just funny because uh i don't know if you heard the best like hey are you 19 because that was the age what <laughs> Oh my God. But the worst part is he doesn't turn around. I, I blame myself now. You know, who would have thought this would have been fun, but you recognized him right away. Uh, can you oh, I love that. Wait, is that you? Or? No, no, that's, uh, I don't think I'm in this sketch. That's uh, that's actually the editor of uh, Maxim Magazine back in the, uh, in the day. Oh. 
uh yeah and then um yeah that's my friend john and then yeah there's a girl who has to make a face like she is in the picture oh yeah oh yeah okay thanks yeah see your father was a good that actor that sounds nothing yeah. like him and that's my friend danny and he's a writer on politi- on uh, bill mars uh what is that called the uh, i always forget the name real time with bill maher hmm. you don't think it looks like your dad it doesn't oh. sound like him well, it, it is. Looks like him. <laughs> but his voice sounds like so young. Well, he was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, uh, your father's a very good man. Yeah. And uh, whatever. You're a good kid. Your brother's a nice kid. So they must have done something right. Yeah. It's funny that you're in New York because I really thought you were just, you know, you grew up in Connecticut. And I thought when you, you went to Santa Clara University, which, of course, is my favorite university because they mention it and bend it like Beckham. He's like, no, it's like Santa Clara. So that's the way I always say it because um, I'm um, kind of an idiot that way. But uh, I never thought you were, I mean, the way you look and just you moving away and wanting to move away, I never thought you would come back. What made you come back to New York City? Last um, question. I kind of like always wanted to live in New York. And then broke up with a boyfriend and was like, okay, now's the time to do it. I'm young. I got to get out of here. Um, but I think I want to move back to California when I'm older and like have a Yeah, I probably should have done that too. But I will tell you this. That is wonderful news that you broke up, you broke up with somebody and then moved, but you didn't follow a boy here. That's the worst way to go. Yeah. 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 Never do that. No, I've had friends who do that, and then as soon as they get here. So. Exactly. I mean, how do they not figure it out at this point? Thank God you're smart, and you can tell your friends you're being an idiot. So, <laughs> good work. And they can tell me that. Just Yeah, but they probably won't, because they're idiots, <laughs> obviously, and they, they don't listen to themselves or anybody else's advice. Anyway, Sophie, you are a delight. Good luck on your date this evening. Thank you. I bet you this is the one. I don't <laughs> I got to get on The Bachelor next year, so hopefully he's not. Oh, right. Well, that's a, that puts an does he Is he bearded? No. Good. Yeah, I hate that. All my sister, my Sarah, they love bearded, bald guys. And I'm like, what the hell's the matter with you? But, yeah, that's not – we know who you like now. I mean, in fact, now I want to see a picture of this guy because if he's as good looking as that guy in Emily in Paris, forget about it. That's hot. You guys are going to make a great couple. <laughs> yeah, well, that's unfortunate. I shouldn't have showed you that picture today because now you're going to yeah, be like, no. oh. Oh, sorry, I messed up your now? entire social life. Yeah, sorry about that. Anyway, Sophie, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, we'll be right back. Razzle, dazzle. The Night Fly with David Juskow. Start program right now. Razzle, dazzle. No, you freak flag flying. Oh, I'm going, baby. I'm going. Oh, are you going to be sorry? Well... She is uh, quite the delightful person and um, ridiculously pretty. And, you know, one of the thing is like, uh, you know, my sister, I mean, if she can't find a man, what hope is there for anybody? But uh, she's really nice. And it was nice of her to drop by and give us a little insight on uh, what it would be like to uh, be that young. Uh, if anything else, especially during COVID and uh, dating or even feeling confident enough to want to appear on television, uh, you know, in The Bachelor and, and, and making out in front of the cameras. <laughs> I don't think that would be for me. Uh, although I have had some kissing scenes on stage. <laughs> How you doing, everybody? Hey, how you doing? As Bernie would say. Uh, okay, let me uh, show. I'm going to share my screen right now and show you some uh, stuff that uh, is going on. Now, this this was in the news uh, this week. This is for some reason all an uproar. This is Nancy Pelosi on that. She was on the Tonight Show, and this is her freezer, and it is full of ice cream. And she was kind enough, I guess, to uh, to be on the show and say, oh, yeah, my freezer's full of ice cream. Here's her eating a thing of ice cream. Now, uh, apparently, it's very expensive ice cream. It's called Jenny's. I'm just looking at it now. And then she has Dove Bar. And people are in an uproar because she has all this fancy ice cream in her freezer. Well, you know what? 
when you become Speaker of the House, I feel you're allowed to have fancy ice cream in your freezer. People, you're getting out of control. Who cares? I mean, isn't that the perk of becoming Speaker of the House that you get to have? Really, you get to fill your freezer with whatever the fuck you want. Isn't that the perk? And maybe take, uh, you know, an airplane once in a while somewhere. I, I wouldn't care if she spent taxpayers' money taking a plane. Isn't that the perk? Isn't that the social contract we let we let them have? <laughs> you know, it's so ridiculous. People getting angry over nonsense. That's my job. This isn't the one. If this isn't the funniest thing you've ever seen, if you're again, if you're watching the video uh, portion of uh, the show. So in Germany, a woman, I don't know if you heard this in Germany, a woman, uh, a, a, a hit and run driver hit. Uh, I don't know whether she, I don't think she hit anybody, but she hit something or another car or whatever and ran. And there were four kids who saw the entire incident and they, the police asked them to sketch the incident. And again, if you're watching the video, you have to see this is Louise's sketch of what happened. It's, the, it's, it's a child sketch. They're six years old. It's a, it's a picture of a car which looks more like the Mandalorian ship or Batman's mobile because it's got the flames coming up. But I think they're supposed to be headlights. And Louise is sitting there like the kid is sitting there watching the car go by. They have a stick figure of the lady in the window passing by. This is hilarious. And the police are truly using this to find the woman. But wait do you see this next one. Look at this. <laughs> this is Selena's uh, picture, but spelled with a C. Uh, and you can see she's got a picture of the four kids watching. And uh, I don't, that could be their teacher on the right. And she, she made the colored the lights, the traffic lights. And the woman uh, not stopping and and driving through the uh, the the caution uh, uh, you know what, what do you call the blocks? Uh, this is a great depiction, which I really think is going to help the cops uh, <laughs> find this woman. This is like the greatest thing I've ever seen, and uh, I don't know why. I mean, if this works and they find the woman through this, that woman is going to be the mo the only way this would be funnier. Again is if I was the person they were looking for and I was found out through these children's drawings. That would be hilarious. Now, these are some pictures I just saw today uh, I wanted to share with you of the some of the places, not the Comedy Cellar, which I am begging them to do, that have designed these spectacular outside eating areas on their sidewalks and uh, and their streets. So this is right here near me on the Upper East Side, a place called Daniel. As you can see, they've pretty much built singular cabanas for fine dining where somebody like Sophie and her date could go and have a very romantic dinner for two in a little cabana said, so look how nice this is. Some people are doing it up complete with heating lamps. They're getting ready. The seller's not doing that, and I'm very upset about that. I want them to winterize and get ready. This is what it looks like from the other side of the street. And here you see this couple in there having a lovely time, completely enclosed, but not completely enclosed. There, there's plenty of air coming through, but uh, obviously it's heated. I mean, it doesn't look that great. They should put some photos on the wall or something like that. But that's, you know, at least you can go outside and eat. And there's probably some music. And here you can see on the flip side of that, they just have the regular. And you can see these people are freezing. <laughs> uh, but there's heat lamps right above. But look how it looks like a like a cabana, like a country club cabana section where people are eating in the cabanas. But uh, a very smart idea for a fancy schmancy. Uh, what, what do I always call them? Uh, oh, damn, I can't. Uh, Snobatorium restaurant. Here's another restaurant. I don't. I uh, Where is this located? I don't. Is this in Amsterdam? This might be on the Upper West Side, uh, around Amsterdam Avenue. You see these little, they're little bubbles. People are eating and uh, eating and like the like those uh, like those uh, 
American gladiator bubbles that people would like go in. And that's what they're eating in here. It looks kind of gross in the outside, but you see inside, everybody's happy and content. They're like little tents, but they're bubbles. And you have your own restaurant in there. It looks like a good time. Yeah. And uh, is that what it looks? No, no, this is a different restaurant. This is in Gramercy on 22nd Street, a place called Novita, which is also doing it right. Uh, with little almost, uh, what would you call them? Like uh, glass houses. I mean, they really went all out. Look at this. This is like a little house. These people are sitting there and the door is open and it's like a little greenhouse. That's what it looks like. People are getting very creative and I'm damn impressed. Uh, this is a place on the Lower East Side called Oji or Ouija. It's Japanese. And although it looks like you're eating inside in this picture, uh, here's the guy. It, it's uh, it's outside. It just looks for the but look how enclosed it is and yet not enclosed. I mean, these guys really spent some time, spent some money, and said, We're in this for the long haul. Let's really make a solid structure that's going to last another year. And uh, you know, that's what people are doing, and that's why I thought I would share it with you because it's very in ingenious and smart and it looks like things are going to get bad and if you are a restaurant owner you're in big trouble because if the governor at least here in new york is uh saying that people can only there can only be 10 people that would probably be less than 25 percent so if the restaurants go into lockdown again i there was a comedy club that just closed called the creek in the cave yesterday i didn't like it very much but uh, a lot of people did like it, and after 14 years, it closed because it couldn't handle COVID. Um, people were saying in the Times that it was the first comedy club to close, but it's not. Dangerfields also closed recently, which is up the block from me. Uh, I couldn't be happier, really. I hope somebody buys it. That's great uh, and makes it into a really nice, clean comedy club. That place was dirty and gross, uh, but those are two comedy clubs closing. Comedy clubs are not in business. The comedy clubs cannot do shows. If they're a restaurant, they can serve dinner and maybe survive, maybe survive. But when it's illegal to do any shows, in fact, I was going to meet with my friend Lee this weekend, uh, this week, about doing a show at this uh, restaurant called Etc., uh, which is right near the improv on their second floor. They have a big, it can hold 100 people. So why couldn't we hold, you know, 20 people, social distance and do a show? But it got worse again, and now you can't, you just can't do anything indoors. Things are getting worse before they get better. But speaking of comedy, speaking of danger fields specifically, and comedy, why don't we bring in Esther Koo right now, who, uh, wait till you hear this, what happened to us uh, on election day, but uh, she also uh, just posted a picture of danger fields being at danger fields, and uh, she's coming to us live from Florida, the biggest hot spot in America, uh, in the world, maybe right now, of uh, COVID and everything's open there. So this ought to be interesting. Why don't we bring in Esther Koo uh, just right after this? The Nightfly. <laughs> what an imbecile. What an ultramaroon. <laughs> Running away won't save you. Don't you believe it. The Nightfly. With Dave Juskow. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome back. Let me introduce my lovely next guest. You all know her. She's amazing. The amazing comedian Esther Koo, everybody, is joining us. Hello. Hello. You look gorgeous. You look gorgeous, and your eyebrows are turning horizontal, not vertical. You know. Vertical, I, not horizontal. I hate, I don't want to, you know, it's like whenever I see Martin Scorsese, I get really worried. I'm like, wait, do my eyebrows look like that? But I do get them trimmed when I go to the when I go to the hairdresser or whatever, but they still look bushy. <laughs> you get them trimmed? Are you at Seinfeld's apartment? Yes. Oh, that is so cool. Well, it's the best one. You know, last time we saw each other, I had the Capitol behind me, but it just this one seems to be where, you know, it's not distracting and I don't lose that much with it being behind me and stuff. I don't know. It seems to be the best one. I love it. Yeah, but you're not using a filter and your room looks amazing, too. <laughs> it just looks so nice and clean and comfortable. 
It's actually messy right now, but um, it doesn't look that way. I was just setting up my microphone and here's my. Um... Yeah, so you're you're in Florida, right? Yes. And that's where you've been most of the time during the pandemic. Is that correct? Yes. But you've been traveling back and forth between L.A. and Florida. Yeah, L.A. is crazy. It's it feels kind of emptied out. I don't know if it's because I was expecting it to look empty, but I was like, oh, it's easier to find parking spots now. And it's funny. It's the exact opposite here. I mean, it is it is easy in one way, but people are fighting over parking spots because they're building all these outdoor structures to eat in at the parking spaces. Oh, I know. Right. So that's the prop. So everybody's fighting. They're, they're having fist fights over parking spaces because there are no more parking spaces. Any restaurant has taken them all up oh, legally. I know. And like in L.A., the restaurants that have parking lots are making all the money. Right. And and the ones that are in strip malls where they share a parking lot and it's always been tight to begin with, they're, they're, they're they screwed. Have, you know, five yeah. tables set up compared to the restaurants with parking lots. And it what a difference it makes. Yeah, I was looking at some restaurant, I think. Uh, we, I think I was opening for Rachel Feinstein in uh, Connecticut and we saw this restaurant. I don't remember what it was, but they had this beautiful parking lot. So they had all this room in it you know I and, know. and I, I was, was like, like I was imagining there must be like two brothers who both own restaurants and one 10 years ago was like I'm getting the one with the parking lot and the other guy's like no man it's this one's so you'll be cheaper. sorry I <laughs> know right like how imagine how many people have that hey are you okay I heard some noise over there I told you so I'm are, I'm good how are you you need to call the cops I heard some uh, noises no 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 all right no, I'm just checking in. Uh, but uh, yeah, so what do you, what, I mean, what have you, well, actually, well, uh, I do have, I know you're performing uh, on Wednesday. I'll show you in a second. Let me tell you why uh, I had Esther on the show for one reason. I'll just start sharing the screen here. Um, Esther and I were together on election day. <laughs> <laughs> um, here we go. So you can see my screen, right? Yes. So I'm going to start with so so Esther and I were uh were were Are you worried about whenever you share your screen that like people are going to see what kind of porn you've been watching? Not in the least. Okay. Um I think everybody is uh, familiar with uh my habits. So uh, I don't worry about any of that. <laughs> you know, it's not like it'd be a big secret. You were watching porn? I was. Um I think <laughs> in, I mean in this day and age does anybody really care? Anyway, so Esther and I were on this. Now, now, okay, so here's the thing, Esther. You're a comedian, and I believe that you have great respect for comedy and for the comedy seller. And the, we all know that the comedy seller, at least before the, all this happened, was the greatest comedy club in the country, and you just wanted to get in, and it's an honor to be past there. Or it's an honor to just be that they like you and ask you to do stuff. Am I Right. Right. You get it. I get and, it. And, and it's very clear. And uh, if anything, so I've been I've been intimidated by the place. Of course. More. We all, you know me what too. Mean? What? I mean, even people who are past there are intimidated by it. Yeah, exactly. So, right. There's an intimidation factor. So when you're asked by the owner and uh, Hatem, uh, who does this the Life of America, but to be on their Election Day special, wouldn't you consider kind of a high honor? Totally. And I was even thinking, I was looking at other comics. I'm like, how come they weren't asked? Well, I think they were asked and people were just like, I don't want to be on it. And now you know why. But because uh, <laughs> you, you did it, you saw what it was. So the, the best part was that I watched the entire five hours. Uh, I did like, too. Oh, you did? <laughs> oh, I thought you did. Oh, that's even funnier. Okay. Oh, wait, no, no, no. No, you watched it as it was happening. Yeah. I watched it after oh yes so i watched it as it was happening here's the best part so just before you now first of all it was one of the most boring things i've ever seen uh but i enjoyed it because i you know everybody in it and i was going to be on it so i was watching for more like homework purposes get the feel of everything <laughs> which clearly you didn't do yes so but just before so they understand people they take this very serious and just before esther came on this happened, and I don't think you saw this, 
this crazy girl came yeah out. okay there's just uh, people journalists talking idiots coming out well this, it, crazy, it, this crazy girl that i t- spoke about on the podcast last week kate herman came it up. meant oh, something i saw so, that later um, okay they're so voting again, idiots. We, you, sorry they're voting idiots can i do it all right cool yes we can hear you now jesus christ welcome back <laughs> how fun how much fun have we been having <laughs> Oh, uh, not as much There's, as you, apparently. <laughs> I don't know. It's so nice to see all of your fucking faces. I feel like I'm already the world champion of the world. Because right. the hey, match hey. has been to talk you. Whatever. <laughs> what have you been talking about? <laughs> all right. Kate's been having a good time, too. So as, as soon as she came on, she doesn't know what's going on. She's drunk as a skunk. And, and immediately, no gives the signal to cut her off. <laughs> Obviously, you know, you can... we, it almost felt like she thought it was like she was like FaceTiming Hatem or something. Yeah, exactly. Right. She's an idiot. And what <laughs> I the reason I brought it up and you can see it on the on the video portion of the podcast. You can hear it in the background. Her crazy drunken talk is that she had th- this girl's not a comic. I don't know how she got asked to be on this. It's through Sherrod, I guess. She? Exactly. She's a model. But and sometimes she does comedy, but not at the cellar. So the fact that she was asked had clearly no respect for the podcast, was drunk at a bar, couldn't even get her sound going until 10 minutes after when she came on. And it was like, oh, what are we even talking about? This is amazing. I'm the world champion. I mean, how does a girl like that? They, it, it made us look like fools. I was furious about it. Oh, my God. You were furious. Whatever. It was fine. Like, I guess it was just a fluke. I mean, you invite people and you hope, I know, but I was just really angry because I like to think, again, that it's an honor. You clearly thought it was an honor. You got it. And you came in guns blazing, uh, with, you know, just with prepared material, which clearly you weren't watching beforehand and didn't see <laughs> how it was. And that's why this was so funny. Here's Esther's opening. Again, on the video, you can see it, but on the audio, you'll be able to hear what happened. Then Jesus. Don't so make fun of it. Leading in Virginia, make though. Fun of the so if he wins Virginia, accent, that's though. it, right? So, yeah, he's he's leading in Ohio, actually, as well. Uh, the beautiful comedian Esther Cool, the beautiful comedian Boris Hiking, and uh, Justin Morris. She is uh, a long time no see. She's the uh, chief editor of the Immigration Post as well. Hello. Oh, great. Hello. She, she's terrific. I remember her. Hi. Hello. Hey, you guys. <laughs> so How are you not I, watching? You, Esther. I meant Justin. Just <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you, uh, you know, so, you know who always goes blue is Dave Jeskow's balls. Oh, Jesus what? Christ! Where's this Please, coming Esther, from? Esther. <laughs> <laughs> That's upon opening, and no, and remember that just happened two minutes before you came on with Kate Herman. So it's like you come on, like you know, it's also blue. Dave Jeskow's balls, Esther. <laughs> <laughs> that was so. I- funny because you I came feel in bad. Like, i feel bad my microphone was so loud it, it was loud but it doesn't it's like yeah but that was the best part of it too is that it was just you know you were able to just interject and it is just so funny because clearly you weren't watching the tone of what it was which was totally serious and you're <laughs> like hey i'm on at the comedy cellar night i have prepared material like you could be angry at that who would know that it was like the most serious podcast it's it's more serious than cnn's coverage i mean i i don't that's why a yeah, lot of people it don't was like very to do serious it because there were a lot of writers political writers and analysts political pundits there. and yeah. uh journalists and stuff in it yeah this emily yaffe is a journalist and this bassam riff is uh i think he was an advisor to hillary clinton and you know it's like yeah there were some serious people but that's what the podcast is supposed to be but then or the show but then you know, you're supposed to come on and do what you did. Th- to me, that's the way it seems like it should go. But uh, my God. Well, also, also at that point in the night, everybody was kind of depressed because they thought everybody thought Biden was going to lose. Right. And it, what ended up happening? Even though we were even though by this time of the night, Biden had more electoral votes than Trump did. But because he lost Florida and Texas, we were all like, it's over. Right, right. Yes. It was kind of interesting. And so it was a I walked into a somber mood. Yeah. And um, and, you and, know me, I'm yeah. always I'm just used to masking my depression. So, you know, 
but so, you know, but that's what was so funny though, too. It's like, you just, you, you know, you just came in and thank God brought some levity into what was so depressing. And it's just funny that Noah was like, Esther, but he loves you. <laughs> he absolutely loves you. So there was no issue or anything there, but yeah. It was, yeah. That, obviously I, I hadn't, I wasn't watching it. Yeah. I, know. I just, I just walked in. Like I thought you guys had all been joking around this whole time. Of course. So. Why wouldn't you think that? Right. right. And that's why it's funny. This, this journalist, this journalist, Emily Yaffe, she's like a, a, a serious journalist, you know, and she's just like, well, you know, I think we have to look to, uh, you know, these kind of times, uh, you know, and they're like, hey, just has balls. What's happening? How are you? <laughs> well, you know why I also was so vocal is because the night before I did that other Zoom show where it was with Deborah Messing and Josh Gad. Oh, right. And the with voting all one, huge the ridiculous celebrities one. that like, you know, I didn't get a word in because I didn't dare speak when like there's four pages of Zoom celebrities on there. Right. So after having sat there and watched and been an observer of that Zoom and kind of like biting my tongue every time I wanted to talk, I was like, okay, well, this one, you yeah. know, this one I can talk at because who who's on there, you know? Well, you so were you, talking when you had come on the nose podcast, you had mentioned the, uh, the Cubans were the issue, I believe. Right. That oh, they yeah, voted yeah. for Trump. Yeah. That's odd, isn't it? Um, it's not odd, but if you live in Florida, you understand, not that I understand, but you know, that's just how they are. And you would think that they would want to like stop the oppression and, Get out of, you know what I mean? Like yeah, they live love in it. a real democracy, but Cubans and Latinos in general, they're just sexist to begin with that they don't want a female vice president. Well, nobody wants that. We were just talking <laughs> about your gynecologist, apparently a woman. <laughs> what is so crazy? <laughs> what is happening? My gynecologist was like, it's hot in here. She's like, isn't it hot? And I'm like, uh, you have clothes on. I'm not hot. Oh, I, I thought I thought you were starting a porno. My gynecologist was like, it's hot in here. I'm going to take this off. No, no, no. It's oh. truly what happened. <laughs> I know it sounds it sounds like a setup. It does. And meanwhile, what was it only this past January you were hosting the porn awards, the ABNs? Was it this past January? No, it was last year. Oh, it was last year. Oh, because wouldn't that yeah. be like it, it's just everything is it seems like last January is two years ago. Yeah, you know? right. Uh, that's so funny that you host. In fact, I, I have a picture because, um, you know, the strangest, you know, my friend has been uh, the publicist for the porn awards for years. Here's oh. how pretty, look how pretty you are. That's my. And, oh, is that your friend? Yeah. Yeah, that's my friend, Lawrence. I mean, we've known each other for 54 years, you know, we grew up together. He's uh, he, grabbing my ass in that photo. I got to meet to him. No, there's no way he would do that. I, I'm just he, kidding. Oh, okay. I'm just <laughs> I'm just I, no, because I was looking at his arm, but he's so not that type of guy. So I was like, he, you know, that's why they have him there, you know, because he's perfect. But he knows, you know, he helps on the red carpet when they're interviewing. He knows all the names of the stars and everything. So, you know, this was him back and me in the 80s when we were both really thin. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Is that unbelievable? That is so funny. Yikes. <laughs> But you look gorgeous there. You did. It was so, you know, I've been looking for that opening song you did. I only saw it when it was airing. So I wanted to name all the, I, you know, I know all those, those girls in the thing. I want to uh, see. You can't you find know them. all those girls? Yeah, of course. I know them all, you know. <laughs> I didn't but, know anybody. Oh, I don't... so yeah, you were with like the most famous porn stars in the nation right now. Really? Was, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I, they were all very nice. Were they? It seemed like yeah. they were having a really good time. Yeah, I mean, these girls, they're sweethearts. They're really nice. Hey, wait, we'll go back to I just wanted to plug your uh, show this Wednesday. Uh, this comes out on Tuesday, the 17th, Wednesday, November 18th, the Smarty Pants Comedy Show with Esther Koo in Miami, Florida. So yeah. it's, a, it's an actual outdoors, socially distanced venue. Is that correct? They have a huge patio. So, yeah, we're doing a show outdoors. And even though cases are spiking and people are writing comments like, are you sure you want to do this show? Cases are spiking right now. But it's all oh, Florida. Florida has been open. They never closed. 
So yeah, but this is all outdoors. Is, isn't that okay? Or they're saying yeah. that's not okay either anymore. No, it's okay. I mean, they're even doing indoor shows here. Yeah, I know. Which I think it's crazy, but I guess it's, it's crazy. They don't care. Florida has been open this entire time. I guess they're doing like socially distanced indoor shows and. But just going back know. to those girls, uh, the, 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 the porno Which girls. Which one's those, your favorite? Well, I like, uh, what's her name? Kenna James. I think uh, she's the blonde. Kenna? Um, but, uh, you know, whatever. I like them all. But, uh, I mean, for, you know, at various times, I guess. But they, but they, <laughs> but they, they were nice. Were they, were they like, well, I mean, I've been to the porn awards before. And everybody was nice and normal and great, actually. You know, I've met a lot of the girls through Lawrence um, and hung out with them and spent time with them. And they all seem normal. It doesn't seem like the visions we used to have of our head in the 70s where they're all going to be drugged out and, you know, crazy. No, it's not as crazy as it used to be, I feel like. It's, it's you know. I if you're talking like about the awards itself and the ceremony, I don't think it's ever been crazy. I think that's a myth of what you have in your head. Because the multiple times I went, it's been actually kind of just lame antiseptic and kind of off the award ceremony itself is awful there's no way to win on that stage you're opening monologue you know and i've spoken to everybody you know it's you atel uh jim norton greg fitzsimmons they've all had the worst sets of their life on that stage you know because uh i think you were the only one that did it right and you're just blowing through it they're not paying attention they don't care right you know <laughs> Yeah, it's about they're they're just they're all anticipating what award they're gonna win or if they're gonna win. Yeah, and I if know. It increases their pay rate for the year. It's the ironic worst gig you could have, even as a man. Uh, you know, yeah, like and it's... they paid me in sperm. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> people think I made a lot of money. I made nothing. Well, that's the thing. You know, you'd figure, but I think for guys, it's like, yeah, I'll do it. You know, and they don't care what they get paid. And then they realize this gig sucks. I mean, Fitzsimmons has been talking about it for years that he, uh, Dave Navarro was in the front row and he hated him and he just couldn't make him laugh. And it was driving him crazy. And he was only trying to make Dave Navarro laugh after a period of time. You know how that is. It's the one person in the audience with his arms folded that's not getting it. And you're just, you will laugh. Dave, Dave Nav Navarro is just conscious of where the camera is and if he's on camera at that moment he doesn't care what's going on yeah i know i know but it's but it's still balls to go up there and do what you did and you really look beautiful uh and uh i assume i i mean i we we were talking that night when you were there i guess i mean i assume it was a fun time i mean regardless of what it was it was a fun time right yeah it was fun i mean everybody was very professional yeah. You know, like yeah. I went Go to figure. after parties. I went to after parties and it's not like they're having orgies. It, that's what I have to tell people. I have pictures. We went to a lot of after parties and it was not what you're thinking in your I head. know. You think porn awards and you think like, oh, my God, I'm going to be invited to an orgy. And right. I, we thought I that, too. I, and I, I didn't get invited to any orgy. I was like, do I have to start it in my own hotel room? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let we me were DM the... these girls on Twitter. Come over, <laughs> room 504. Yeah, it's so it's so strange. I'm glad you experienced it as well because I think a lot of people just don't believe me. You I know, know. <laughs> people don't believe it. They don't want to believe it. And they, they don't want to believe it. And they, they think that like, oh, well, you're just a dork. Like, right, right. You didn't get invited to the orgies or. No, we would have been invited because, you know, I know the, the publicist and the people in charge. So we would have been right. invited. No, yeah. And, parties, and you were like, the host, you know, the parties are fun. They're, they, you know, they have girls that are just wearing a thong and sure, right. around playing pool. But it's also more of networking for them than it is an orgy. Like, you know, they have sex when they're working. This is like their night right. off. Right. This is like their Academy Awards. Right. Well, it is their Academy Awards. Yeah. Not. Yeah. yeah. So they're like, let's let's leave our vaginas to rest right now. <laughs> I just I just want to like give my business card to the next big star so that they have me in their next scene. Yeah. Right. You know, they're all they're all networking. Isn't that funny? That it feels like. Do you really have to network for work when you're a porn star? You know? Yes. <laughs> Nowadays, of course. I guess. Sure. But I, I met I met porn stars who have day jobs. Really? And they were it like, it seems in this day and age that wouldn't be a thing since it you know you you would be able to tell who's you know it's so visual nowadays you know it's not like the seventies where you know how would you know you have to or go you to could a movie go by theater. a different name. 
Yeah, exactly. Maybe. But now everybody, I mean, how could you how could you have a day job if you're in porn? How could you possibly do that? Well, because, you know, they don't get paid as much as they used to. No, I know. But how could you not be recognized? Oh, well, they do. They do get recognized eventually. I don't know. That seems dangerous for some reason. Anyway, um, that all being said, have you been doing a lot of gigs, at least no. in Florida? No, I haven't been doing many gigs at all. I mean, I've been just trying to be a responsible citizen and not spread spread this virus. Yeah, that's really you know? nice. I know we've been talking I, through it. Yeah, we've been talking through it. And I don't know, I don't, I don't feel like I need to perform right now because it seems dangerous. But then there's like this parallel world where you go on Instagram and you see comedians performing and touring as if nothing's happening. Yeah. And um, it's, it's, I mean, at least time right now. Yeah. I mean, when I was doing it all summer with Jim, I mean, we were, you know, people were in their cars. It made sense. And there yeah. were a lot of protocols, you know, to uh, perform and temperature taking and all that kind of stuff and all that stuff before, you know, we even knew how to do all that. But yeah, I see that too, where people are oh, performing. At the doctor today, they had me take my temperature with this thing they put in my mouth. Rectal thermometer. Rectal? Oh, sorry. Rectal. I'm sorry. I thought that's what, that's what I use. That's the only true temperature. No, I go to like, a restaurant and I'll do that. It's this thing that's like the size of a Band-Aid and you peel it open and you put it in your mouth and under your tongue for a minute and then it shows up like your temperature shows up on the other side. That seems like a w big waste of time when everybody else, you're just leaning into a camera and they just take it. Or what do you need the gun? I know. The gun seems just as effective as putting it under your tongue. What is the point of that? <laughs> that think... seems like a germ nightmare. Oh, well, it's like, see, it's like in a, in a sealed thing, like a bandaid, like you open oh. it. Yeah, but I know, but then you have to still touch it and put it and I, I, it seems worse than the goddamn gun. I know, and <laughs> you have to like kind of move your mask to put it on underneath. And well, that's I'm very like, odd. You know, the medical supply industry, they're coming up with like all sorts of stuff. And I, so. I think a, a lot of times people just buy cool stuff at these medical supply conventions to like set them apart from the other competitors, whatever. That's what I would do. You know? <laughs> so oh, I know. Um, what do you, um, are you going to just stay in Florida from now on? Or are you going back to LA? I know you were cleaning out your place, but are you still going back and forth? You know, I am going back and forth, but um, like, I'm just going to be here till the pandemic is over. Oh, you are. So now you're staying in yeah, Florida. I mean, unless I get a, you know, are you still get keeping a, your place in LA though? Get a job. Well, my place is vacant. I could. But you're still paying for it. No, I'm not paying for it. Oh, good. Okay, that's yeah, what yeah, I was yeah. doing. Yeah, you don't want that extra. Yeah, expense. and then I was walking. You know how I feel about that place. You know, I mean, you know, I, I don't like hanging around in there. You know, well, I mean, the only mostly because you know you can hear the McDonald's ordering. Mostly, mostly uh, because <laughs> you're uh, you're not a minority, so you don't feel safe. But no, I was walking. I, I was walking around Beverly Hills. They have all these apartments that are vacant. Really? Like, oh my God, every block it says vacancy, one bedroom for rent, two bedroom Ooh, for rent. How much? Everywhere. <laughs> Just curious. What does a one bedroom in Beverly Hills cost? Probably 2000 How much? Probably 2500 And that's what I pay here. Or maybe I pay more. I don't know. It seems like a better deal to be in Beverly Hills. Although not now, I guess. I don't know. I, I don't mean, know what's going to happen. I mean, I feel like I should go back and snag a rent controlled apartment now because they're yeah, all exactly. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. Right. I know that seems like the right thing to do sooner or later. You assume this is going to end. But uh, from what I have been told, at least here in New York City, with Broadway not opening until June of 2021, I don't think that's when that's when comedy will be able to come back. It will follow the way of Broadway. So there's no comedy until June of 2021. I mean, when is this going to end? Nobody knows. Well, it's like the way people are acting and how many people are in denial and mask, non-mask wearers. Like, it seems like it's going to be around forever. It does seem that way. And Doesn't I was enjoying it? it at first, but now uh, with, no, <laughs> with, with no money coming in, it's it, it's worse. But uh, when the money was coming in, I was really enjoying just doing nothing. And there's, of course, no fear of missing out. So it's beautiful. But isn't doing nothing what you normally do? Yes. But this is a much better way of doing it when no one else can do it either. Yes. It's all about the fear of missing out, Esther. I think you know. 
I know. You know, I got to open for Esther uh, the la- when things were normal, I guess, the last time I was out in L.A. at this really cool bar, um, which seems like that you could do a show in there because it's kind of open. A lot of places in L.A. are open, like the windows are wide open. Like, I still yeah, feel like you could LA, do Yeah, but in L.A., you get fined if you have people sitting inside your restaurant or bar. Oh, you do? Because yeah. remember, that place where we were also had a big alleyway uh, where the movie theater was. Uh, letting out since the movie theater was closed, you could totally do a show in that alleyway from that bar that we were at. Now, I think it was right on Hollywood Boulevard, I know, right? But they don't even allow outdoor shows. Oh, they don't? Like all those outdoor shows that are going on in LA, they're all secret and you have to oh. DM for the location. Oh, I guess now that you mention it, maybe they are in New York too. You're right. You're no. not allowed to do any shows. Yeah. Oh, it's awful, right? And that's a perfect location. That place would have been perfect. You could have a a nice spread out crowd there in that location no. by that bar. And when I came on back on my flight, I I had my N95 mask on to be super safe. And the flight attendant was like, oh, we don't allow masks with filters on them. What? 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 Yeah. And she like. What the hell put, does that mean? It made me put on a surgical mask. I, I don't understand. I'm like, an N95 is safer. Is the safest mask of all. Exactly. What? But That's, people, what people, airline was that? American. People think that because that valve is there, that filter. Yeah. Some some people say uh, the valve like it allows like I it, it's safe for me but not safe for others apparently. But yes, geez, I'm that's, like that's uh, the one that all the doctors want. Yeah, exactly. That's the one everybody wants, but you can't afford it. I just use surgical masks. I have this little so, piece now that fits inside my mask. It's like a, I, I don't know what you call it, but it's a that plastic, plastic piece. thing. Yeah, and that's been very helpful actually for Jewish people. For Jewish, wait a minute. No, that's not. Uh, <laughs> but maybe it is because we have bigger noses. But I got mine done professionally. I <laughs> did. You get a nose job? Yeah, back in the eighties. No way. Yeah. Oh wow! Did that hurt? No. Really? Not really. Yeah. Wow. That was pretty good. That was good, right? Didn't notice. Wow. Yeah. Hey. Oh. <laughs> My sister and I have done everything to not look Jewish, but there's no help for that. There's no help for it, let alone our tipping techniques are awful. So people will know right away. I'm joking, of course. Um, (laughs) But uh, anyway, Esther, um, I'm sorry. I didn't want to keep you very long. I really appreciate you coming on. The election day was hilarious and I love talking to you. Um, You're such a doll. um, I am very glad you're safe and sound in Florida when we first talk. When you said you had an appointment at 12, I thought you were talking about three o'clock my time. That's why I got confused. Oh, no, sorry. Sorry for the mix up. Oh, that's OK. Um, I, I never would. I would. I thought you were staying in L.A. I thought you would gone back for good. So no, 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 no. Um, thanks I for having me. Always course. fun to see you. Yeah, it's nice to see and, you too. and talk to you. <laughs> All right. I will. Uh, I'll call you this week. OK, cool. All right. Thank you, Esther. OK, bye. Bye. This just in. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Mud. <laughs> the Night Fly with Dave Juskow. Well, she certainly is a character, uh, but uh, she's actually a, a very good friend. We, we, we talk a lot uh, on the phone. It's not like that, but, you know, that's all right. She's I mean, she's 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 on, you know, that's her job. And uh, but she is a, a sweetheart and uh, like I said, really good friend. So you can't go wrong with Esther Cuckoo. That's a perfect name for her. But I know it's only Esther Cuckoo. But uh, thanks uh, for her coming on. In fact, thanks. Uh, thanks to both of my guests today, Sophie Ponjack and Esther Koo for coming on. I guess that's uh, I guess uh, I think we've done enough for today. I hope you enjoyed our audio video monthly show next week will be our Tuesday before Thanksgiving show. I guess a lot of people probably wouldn't do a podcast then, but I'm doing it because there's plenty of time to listen. I mean, I don't know what's going on. Everything's not normal anyway, but I probably would because I'd be like, well, people will be at home. They'll be like, it's a good thing to listen to. Whatever the case may be, we'll be back next week for sure. Uh, Don't forget tonight on the Comedy Cellar nightly show, on the football show, we have Richard Klein. We have the beautiful Amy Yazbek 
Again, I don't know whether I'm allowed to say that anymore, but come on, man. And uh, the very extremely, unbelievably talented David Yazbek. That's going to be an amazing show. That is tonight and next week on the Comedy Solo Show on the 24th, two days before Thanksgiving. We have Sarah Silverman, Mark Cohen, and manager David Rath to join us in merriment before Thanksgiving, which will be the most awkward Thanksgiving since the first one. Me thinks uh, so, but uh, nevertheless, hopefully, hopefully, listen, I might be alone too. So we're going to have I'll only have each other. If I'm alone, maybe I'll just tape the podcast on Thanksgiving. Cause what else is there going to be to do? Well, I'll watch football. So eh, stuff anyway, but uh, yeah, I've been thinking, you know, if I don't end up going what am I going to do? I guess, should I order stuff now? What, how's that going to work? Boy, talk about depressing. I have spent Thanksgiving alone before and it is not a lot of laughs. It's fun to do once, maybe when you think it's what you want to do when you're done with your family and everything, but it's not, it's not good. It's not good. So anyway, remember the Patreon page is, is open. Geez, I hope this show was indicative uh, enough to, <laughs> I feel like this show uh, wasn't good enough to ask you to subscribe or invest or donate on the Patreon page. But uh, nevertheless, it is what it is. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Uh, I should have probably thought of once you put on Patreon have the most spectacular show. But we're waiting for that because, folks, the 300th episode is coming up, uh, I believe, on December 7th or 8th. The 300th Nightfly episode. Can you believe it? The 300th episode of a podcast nobody really listens to. But... Uh, I'm planning something. We got to do something, and maybe it'll just, it'll obviously be the video show, but uh, we'll have people popping in and out. So I guess that will be the Patreon spectacular you've been waiting for to subscribe to the Nightfly Patreon uh, podcast. Anyway, folks, thank you so much for joining us. I hope everybody is safe and not full of COVID, and I just hope you have a wonderful week. And you're just happy. And I hope that this podcast can give you a few laughs as we uh, get to the end of the worst year ever. But uh, look, I did it again. I put everybody back in a downer. They bring it up in a high one. I'm an idiot. And that's the that's why you love it. The night fly, everybody. I will see you next week. Or, uh, and don't forget about tonight, the Tuesday show at the Comedy Club. See you next time, everybody. Good night. <laughs>